anyone who tells you that you can get rich quick doing anything is probably lying to you. In Diablo 2 Resurrected, there are ways, however, to get richer than most people by making the right decisions early on. In this video, I'm gonna briefly touch on a couple of early strategies to make this work for you for either a ladder reset or in this case, the D2R launch. We're gonna focus on two pieces of advice. The first piece I'm gonna breeze over very quickly. It's just a very general suggestion. The second piece I'm gonna dive more deeply into. And of course, I'm gonna give you my take on the best area to farm if you wanna get richer faster than most people. Let's dive in. And the first piece of advice is ABT, always be trading. Instead of making private games where you're farming Pindle or Mephisto all on your own, make a public trade game instead. People may never join them, but if you don't put yourself out there, you're never gonna make a trade. So if all you have is a friggin' Saul rune to your name, the next game you make on Battle.net had better be called Saul for Trade. You don't have to accept trades that people throw your way, but you should always be willing to negotiate and to make trades if the opportunities present themselves. And the second part of this first key point is that you have to be willing to trade the things that you find early on. It might be nice to hold on to that Saul rune you found in normal, but if you know your mercenary is going to be shit early on, regardless of if he has insight or not, you should probably trade that Saul rune to somebody else who thinks they desperately need it at that point in time. Timing is everything with trades, so if you find something like that, that early on, people are generally willing to pay up for it. They might trade you a rune that's higher than that or just give you a deal on a really nice item that you happen to need. You need to be willing to give up the items that you find early on for more value later on. And key point number two, which will be the main focus of this video, is that you need to stay ahead of the metagame. Think about what everybody made first thing in this D2R launch, right? You had a lot of people making sorceresses, you had a lot of people making hammerdens. So if you know a little bit about the game and you know what step is coming next for these guys, you'll know exactly what you should do to stay ahead of them. One person from our reset team, Synced, made a gold fine barb first thing. Not only are gold fine items cheap early on in ladder because nobody's looking for them, but also it's one of those builds that will allow you to quickly shop for end game items such as circlets, rings, amulets. Even if they're not end game, they may be slightly better or ahead of what most people have. If you haven't already, I would highly suggest checking out our gold find bar build video for more information on how to eventually build one of those. Another player from our reset team chose to respec into a smiter very early on. You guys know by now that smiters are insane for taking out bots bosses, especially uber bosses. This is an incredible build to stay ahead of the meta because as people are farming Countess and trading their T keys for other keys, eventually they're going to want to do the uber bosses, but it will require them to make an entirely different character in order to do so. So you could make a profit by doing services for those people, or you could add some value to the keys that your friends have found and start farming ubers to make a profit as a group. And then if you followed me and you made an assassin on reset, well then you, my friend, are in a really good spot for this particular point in time to stay ahead of the meta. And that's where my favorite area comes into play. If you want to accumulate wealth very, very quickly, one of the best places to farm is the Halls of Vought, or Nilathok himself. Not only can this mini boss literally drop any item in the game, but he also has a very high percent chance to drop Keys of Destruction. And there's one amazing thing in Diablo 2 Resurrected, and that is your Pindle portal doesn't disappear. You can now get the waypoint and complete the quest, and thanks to the beautiful design of this game, that Pindle portal to Nilothok's temple does not disappear, and you are free to do Pindle runs even though you have Nilothok's waypoint. Usually about a week or so after a reset, or in this case, a launch, keys of destruction are extremely valuable. The reason that they're more valuable than the other keys is because they're harder to obtain. The character classes that are most common for people to make early on, such as the Hammerdin or the Sorceress, have a very hard time farming Nilothok without endgame gear. Finding one key of destruction at about one to two weeks after a reset or a launch, that 
one key can fetch you up to three keys of terror or two or three keys of hate. So the sheer value you get from finding the keys alone in game is insane. But the key point here is that we are staying ahead of the meta. Recently on stream, we were farming D keys with our assassin. A lot of people have been asking about my assassin in particular and definitely want to see the gear. So let me show you what we've acquired four days after reset. I'm gonna quickly breeze over the gear here so that you know what we're rocking. We've got spirit sword and spirit shield, of course, very good items early on. We managed to find a plus two to traps amulet. We have an Natalia's shadow armor that we put P topazes in for that extra MF. We did acquire a very nice plus three to traps 20% FCR helm. The first ring still the same as day one. The second ring, a slight upgrade. We did find some mage fists, an IK belt, some alders boots, and of course we have our teleport staff. The charms are nothing special with the exception of Geeds. We did find one of those, additional MF, some resistance charms in the inventory to help with that, and the newest addition, we did get our hands on a plus three to Amazon torch. Still good for the attributes and all resistances. If you want to check out the strategy for the build, I'll direct you to the video for that. But also a lot of people were asking about what the stat attributes were. My apologies for not putting that in the previous video. Basically, as with most builds in Diablo 2, you just want to put enough into strength and dexterity to wear your gear and the rest of your points go into vitality. I won't spend too much time on this as you can check out that video that I've linked right here for more information on this build. Now here are some tips and tricks for farming Nilafok that not a lot of people know. On stream, I was asked how I always knew where Nilafok was. Here's my explanation for that. So immediately when you walk in, right, you're gonna look for a face painting right here, right on this tile. If you see it on this tile, Nilafok is down here, right? You're looking for this, this face painting right here with the eyes. You're looking for that to be right here. If it's right there, Nilathok is down this way. If it's right here, when you walk around, right on this specific little wall area, Nilathok is down this way. If you continue your walk, and as you bound this corner, you see the face right here, Nilathok is up this way. From there, you can conclude that Okay, if it's none of these ways, it has to be up here. But if you need a visual signal to tell you that, the face needs to be right here. And if it's right here, Nilathok is up this way. So that's how we know. That's how we always know which way to go. If you can make something that will allow you to farm just about any area in the game, or if you want to make a build that farms a specific area in the game better than anything else, you are doing your part to stay ahead of the meta. And that is the key to getting richer, faster than other people. You can't do what everybody else is doing. People are going to do it better than you. People are going to do it faster than you. And people are going to do it more than you. But that's the tip right now for staying richer than other people at this point at one to two weeks after a reset or a launch. I wanna thank you so much for watching this video and I'll catch you in the next one.